Blues, folks. Blues are through to the semis pretty comfortably. 41 points to 12 over the Tars. We'll go through some key events and stats, and you guys can let us know your thoughts on how this one went. But yeah, they said it was going to be a hiding, and uh, sure enough, the Blues got it done pretty comfortably. Um, was still kind of relatively tight at halftime, but second half, the Tars were kind of blowing off the paddock. Um, the crowd was all right. Uh, it was kind of, again, a hard draw, I would suppose, given um, given how lopsided the game was supposed to be. And I think the Warriors were once again playing at the same time. Correct me if I'm wrong. But anyway, the game gets underway. The Tars have moved Donaldson to 15 and Edmed in at 10. And kind of a late change from what the initial lineup was listed. I thought that was better. Uh, personally, I prefer Marky Mark out on the wing. And I don't mind Donaldson at fullback, but um, yeah, the Tars, they had a cracking start. Unbelievable. Ned Hannigan on the board within kind of two and a bit minutes. Ned, big Ned. Um, he's got a bit of turn of gas, doesn't he? Didn't know Ned had that in him, but um, yeah, essentially Bodie with the kind of big up and under. The Waratahs let it bounce, which was a little bit uh, risky, but then the, the Blues guys tapped it back and Parise pounced. Line break, passes to Hannigan, boom fire, you're 7-0 up away from home in this quarterfinal, you've been written off, there's a good way to silence the crowd, the crowd was relatively noisy a bit later on, not at this point, they were pretty bloody quiet, but um, yeah, I thought at the start, the Blues were just looking a bit directionless, they just looked a bit lost, they were kind of getting caught behind the advantage line, and um, yeah, it just wasn't looking, they were lacking a bit of direction, which... I mean, they were maybe fortunate they were only down seven points. Other teams might have just put you to the sword and you kind of, there's no coming back from that. But the Blues, when they finally did get a chance down the Tarzan, they had a chance for a three and they took it, which was at least a kind of a bit of a set. And it was Ned. Ned had to get the breakdown who conceded that penalty. So seven points to three after about a quarter of an hour. But then the, the crowd really comes alive with the Finlay Christie try. And it was a bit of a cracker, a bit of Blues magic with that one. Talia doing his thing where he beats tackles for fun. He beat uh, he beat Hooper and he beat a couple of other guys kind of scrambling to grab him. And then uh, when they finally do commit some players in to stop him, the Blues are able to shift the ball quickly left. AJ Lamb offloads to Heem. Heem gets it to Rico. Rico gets it to Finlay Christie. Yeah, wow, from their own half. The Blues have gone like 60, 70, 80 meters. And uh, yeah, they're in the lead. 10 points to 7. They will not go behind again. That is the only lead change of the game. Uh, it looked, though, it looked, though, like the Waratahs had hit pretty much straight back when Dylan Peach looked to have gone over in the corner. But on closer inspection, he drops the bloody ball over the line, which I think, I mean, maybe it's not a game changer, but that's a moment. Like, if you're the Tars, you're the seventh, there's no sixth team, you come into the Blues, who gave you a bit of a hiding early on in the year, you need to take pretty much all your chances, especially early on. And I think it was Christie's tackle. It looked like initially Bodie with the swinging arm, but I think it was uh, Finlay Christie who just dislodged it right as he was able to about to touch it down. So, yeah, a big missed chance for the Tars. If they get that, they do go back in front, but nope. Then uh, the Blues are getting a line-out steal in their own 22, so it's another chance for the Tars gone. Michael Hooper's got a carry in Blues territory. He gets kind of held up. So it's a mall turnover, like multiple chances for the Waratahs surrendering possession. I mean, Mark Nawanitawase is chasing the high balls and winning a few of those contests, you know, quite well, but they're converting nothing. They've got 65% territory and bugger all to show for it, barring that kind of first try. Then the Blues on 35 minutes down the other end, they get a penalty. This time they're not opting for the three, the Blues. Uh, AJ Lamb gets held up, but from that resulting goal line dropout, the Blues just kind of run it back at them when they go look, 13, 14 phases. Patient, patient play from the Blues, which is encouraging given it's a finals match. And uh, Lolala is able to go over. So, uh, yeah, all well, from that dropout, 17 points to 7 at half time. The Blues have had 61% possession, lots of ball, but also um, bugger all. Bugger all territory. The Blues have had 34% territory. So a lot of the game's been played in the Blues half. But despite that fact, the Tars have got five turnovers conceded to one, which kind of highlights 
their lack of that clinical edge when they were down the Blues end. And they've been getting pinged by the ref, man. Seven times to three in that first half. Second half starts and it looks like Michael Hooper's day is done. He's gone off for an HIA, but there's a bit of a miscommunication with him and the ref. Uh, he is called back on after seemingly having gone off. Um, Dalton, they showed it once on the replay. Dalton may have clocked him in the head with a shoulder from a clean out, but they didn't kind of linger on that one. If we'd been in Sydney, they might have had a couple more looks at it on the big screen. Uh, but 47 minutes, a couple minutes later... This is where the Blues really start to run away with the game. A line out about seven meters out. They maul it and Riccatelli goes over. So you get 24-7 up. 52 minutes. They go 16 phases. It's even more patient play this time from the Blues. And um, yeah, they are able to finish it off. Uh, this time it's Sullivan who gets nice and low when he slides into the corner despite the pass that he took being really high. Uh, it wasn't the best final pass. I mean, he got to the man, but it was so high that he was... Kind of asking to have to wait for it and be taken out. But nope, he manages to get it. So good try. 31-7. The commentators are starting to talk about the game being done. I mean, earlier on in the game, they were saying that this was going to be a close game. At one point, Jeff Wilson was trying to kind of breathe a bit of life into it when it was genuinely close in the first half. So maybe I'm being a bit hard on him. But I never felt as a Blues fan like, oh, bugger, we're going to lose this one. It didn't didn't really feel like it. Um, Latu comes on at hooker. Like on around about the hour mark, and they still lose the line-out ball, so it's not great for the Tars when they do have those few attacking chances. Um, and then, yeah, when the Tars are just having to play everything, Jed Holloway drops a pass. Mark Talia picks it up off the ground. If you had your money on him as any time type of try scorer, he, he bagged one for you. So another try to Mark Talia, 38 points to 7. It's looking really ugly now. The Tars do at least get one through Dylan Peach before the kind of final 10 minutes. Um, when Donaldson just puts a little dink and kick over for him. The Blues were looking very casual for that one, I would say. The game being already in the bag, 38 points to 12. Um, the Blues are able to bring on their subs early, so with the game in the bag, don't have to kind of strenuously test anyone too much, and the subs are able to get a few minutes under the belt, so it works for the Blues, but it doesn't work that well as like a kind of, you know, big billing quarterfinal match. Never really had that feeling about it. It was very kind of by the numbers, barring that first try. Um, the game finishes a bit held to skeleton blues get a penalty slot it it's plumber and um, yeah 41-12 41 points to 12 bit of a hiding run meters 444 to 314 to the blues position 58 42 to the blues clean breaks 93 to the blues defenders beaten 36-11 to the blues turnovers conceded 11 by the Tars 6 to the blues the Tars conceded 12 penalties to 5 so virtually every category apart from territory goes in the Blues' favour. It's a pretty one-sided game, folks. I mean, I'm pretty happy that the Blues, <laughs> the Blues made it through, don't get me wrong, but it was uh, less than kind of enthralling stuff in that second half. Um, but yeah, comfortable enough. No heart rate problems for me, no blood pressure. Uh, Talia, try, try assist, eight defenders beaten, two clean breaks, he's a unit. Uh, Rico, 79 metres and five defenders beaten, tackle with 14 from 15 tackles. Michael Hooper, 15 tackles made, one of the top task guys, but misses six, which is a little bit too high. But he does often just shoot out the line and go for them. He at least gets in your way if he doesn't necessarily tackle you. And uh, Mark Nawani to Wase, 46 metres, three clean breaks. No, three defenders beaten, rather. But yeah, there you go. You guys, have any thoughts on the game? 41-12. How do you see the Blues going potentially away from home, assuming both the Chiefs and the Crusaders get it done? Can you see them getting a, an away win if they have to go to... Um, you know, to one of those places, or do you think uh, do you think there's still a cut below those kind of top tier teams? You guys, let us know your thoughts, and um, I'll talk to you guys again soon. Yeah.